So, Janice, nice to see you again. How can I help you today? David, my metabolism is dead. It doesn't work. I think my body's like starving or something like that. But my boyfriend, or <laughs> he's not my boyfriend, <laughs> but he can eat what the f he wants and he still have a 20 pack. But I, on the other hand, oh my god, you're never going to believe this. I was at the store yesterday and I promise you, I just looked at some chocolate and I gained 20 pounds, just like that. So, when people say that they want to increase their metabolism, they usually want to eat more food without getting fat or just lose more fat more quickly. And some people just want to have an excuse for not being able to lose fat. So, in this video I'm going to teach you what metabolism even are and if and how you can increase it. And before we start, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and want to learn about this whole big fitness puzzle, then subscribe now and give this video a like. So we need to understand what is metabolism. Your metabolism is everything, it's all the chemical processes that's going on in your body. It doesn't matter if you're walking, sleeping, talking, it's your breathing, it's all your organs, it's your nail growth, your hair growth, it's everything that's going on in your body. That's basically your metabolism, so you can't say you don't have any metabolism. If you don't have any metabolism, if your metabolism is dead, then you are dead. Your metabolism could absolutely be slower or faster, but you're watching this video to know how to increase it and what you can do about it. I'm not going to go over every component about the metabolism because that will be a very very long video and to be honest we don't even know all the processes that's going on in our body but there are some few components of your metabolism that you want to understand and the first one is your BMR which is your basal metabolic rate. This one is quite easy, it's basically how much energy your body requires in a bare minimum, like when you're sleeping for example, like you're still alive, but you're not dead, so you still need energy to function, right? And what's going to affect your BMR is your lean body mass, your gender, your age and your genetics. To start off with your lean body mass, which is not only how much muscles you have in your body, but also everything that's basically not fat also your bones. So in general, the smaller you are, like if you are a shorter person, you likely need less energy than a longer one. Exactly like in general, if you are a female, you likely need less energy than a man. And no, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. I have some female clients eating more than some of my male clients, but in the vast majority, the smaller you are, you're less likely going to need as much energy. And then we have the age. We know that the older we get, a natural metabolic drop could happen. But it's usually because we're not training as hard as we did when we were younger or not being as active as we were. So this could absolutely be solved by just keeping our sleep in check, training hard and being active. And lastly, we have the genetics. I hate talking about genetics because as soon as we talk about genetics, people tend to use that as an excuse, but genetics is absolutely true. Some people will have a higher metabolism, will be able to use the energy they eat more easily, burn more fat easily, building more muscle easily than others. And this is the truth. If you would give people literally all the money in the world to try to be as extreme of an obese like some people could be, they would never make it because that's a generic factor. While others could be like, ah, oh, yeah, one cake more, why not? Yeah, I can eat one ice cream more, why not? Without having any trouble eating in that calorie surplus. But this doesn't mean you have to eat that extra cake, right? And exactly like on the flip side, some people won't be able to build as much muscle as other people or have to like do the twice of the work. But this doesn't mean that you can't do your thing for years and years and years hard work and then blame the generics. So I just want to point out that generics absolutely do matter, but I don't want to give people the simple excuse, right? Regarding building muscles, let's talk about a big muscle myth of metabolism. Some people claim like, oh, you have a lot of muscles, so you can eat how much you want. And other people will claim that for every kilo you'll burn 200 calories more. That's bullshit. Well done studies have shown that you'll burn around 16 calories per kilo. So no, it's not a complete myth, but after like 5 kilos of muscles, that's a lot of hard work. You'll get a shitty reward of 60 calories. Anyway, other things that affects your metabolism is the thermic effect of food, which has the fancy name TEF. It's basically what it costs for your body to handle and digest the food that you eat. And some foods 
requires less and some food requires more energy and because of this truth there have been a lot of bullshit talk about zero calorie foods and people literally eating chili or other spicy foods and burning their mouths in the belief that they'll burn more fat a study made on eating quite much chili resulted in a calorie burning of 10 calories per day which is nothing. But protein, on the other hand, is king when it comes to the thermogenic effect of food. It has a cost up to 35% of the calories you eat, so it will cost more energy for your body to digest protein than from fat, for example. So if you want to increase your metabolism, then a high protein diet will for sure help. Protein is also the most filling macronutrient, which will make you eat less in general and fill you up, which will for sure help you with losing fat. So the last component of your metabolism I want to go over is your TEA, basically your activity and the calories you burn from strength training and cardio. And if you're wondering which cardio that is the best for burning fat, I have a video that covers everything up, so I'll just link that in below. And when we're talking about cardio, there are some metabolic myths there too. Many believe that different kinds of cardio makes you transform to a fat burning machine, afterwards like the popular HIIT training for example, have been claimed to be the fat burning cardio because of its after burning effect. And although there is a small calorie burning effect after performing the HIIT sessions, the calorie burning is around 40 to 80 calories depending on how long and how hard you go and these sessions is going to take a hit on your nervous system and will be quite taxing so you will have to recover much longer from them so it's not a lie that they have an after burning effect but it's insignificant and you could just walk that three to ten minutes extra and save yourself from that recovery but in your TEA, it's also your activity outside of training itself. It's your overall activity like fidgeting with your fingers, looking around, blinking your eyes, talking, walking, what I'm doing right now, thinking. All of this goes under the name NEAT. And here is the big metabolism change you actually can do. Research has shown that the NEAT effect could vary from 200 to 900 calories from individual to individual per day. And that's insane. That's more than some people work out for a whole week. That's what some people burn every day. You might have that friend that's eating whatever they want without gaining weight. First of all, let's just say that you don't really know how much they eat over time. You don't know if they compensate with less calories other days or not. But some friends of yours may never sit still, never shut up, and stressing the shit out of you. That person have a high need. So the need is a super important factor in your metabolism. Just by being in another place will make you have a higher calorie burning because of all of this looking around thing. Another thing that's actually increasing your calorie burning from need is the amount of calories you actually eat. And this could sound quite weird that you're eating more calories in order to lose more fat. But if you're eating more energy, you'll be able to burn off more fat and train much harder. And this is the reason why you shouldn't start a fat loss phase by eating too little calories, because your body will try to adapt to the lower calories and lower down its need. Which takes us to the myth about starvation mode. There is no starvation mode, that's complete bullshit. What it is, is the adaptation from your body's need. So what it's going to do, it's going to be lazier. You're going to not stand up as straight as you used to do. You're not going to train as hard. You may be going to use the elevator when you should use the stairs or when you always took the stairs. That's the metabolic adaptation your body's trying to save energy from. And I just have to make something clear. No, you can't eat more and more calories forever you'll end up fat <laughs> the point with this is to tell you that you should eat as much calories as possible while losing weight or fat and not aim for the lowest amount you can eat that many people always ask me I don't know why people asking me how low they can go you should be asking how much calories can I eat while losing fat so if you want to increase your metabolism then higher up your need so a good tool for that is to count your steps. If you find out that you're walking 5,000 steps in average, try to aim for 8,000 or 10,000. Walk when you're talking on the phone. Use the stairs instead of the elevators. 
stand up more and stuff like that. And then we have the supplements like fat burners, for example. They doesn't work and will not burn fat for you just like that. If there was a supplement that actually made you burn fat by just taking a supplement, then nobody would have this problem. And it's not legal if it works. What some supplement may help you with, like caffeine for example, is to give you a stimulating energy or suppress your hunger in order to make you move more, eat less. But if you think that you can drink coffee or taking some caffeine and sitting still all day and burn fat, then it's something wrong with you. And if you think that putting butter in your coffee will make you burn fat just like that, then there is something wrong with you again. If you like putting butter in your coffee, then do it. But if you want to lose fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit. So to sum this video up, how to increase your metabolism? move more and eat a high protein diet and of course there is a lot of more factors like less stress more sleep this will all help you and put you in a better position but in the end there is no quick fixes you can't change your age you can't change your generics you can't change your gender M maybe your gender but you, you understand me. There is no quick fixes. In the end, if you want to increase your metabolism, then move more and eat more protein. So I really hope that you understand now what metabolism even are, how to look at it and what to do about it. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.